Hey, welcome back. I've been working hard on some of my projects, especially the 3D printer, trying to get it done. Um, and then one day this happened. So that's pretty cool. John Saunders must have had a chip that looked like my YouTube channel name or something, and yeah. So now I'm actually at 5,500 subscribers, which is a pretty massive jump over the course of three weeks. So thanks everyone, and welcome to all the new people. Hopefully my channel provides you with at least some wincing, can't look away style entertainment. Speaking of difficult to watch, here's some footage of me soldering. I have to solder on some current limiting resistors for the Gecko Drive. The Gecko Drive has a linear current limiting strategy where one kilo ohm is approximately one amp of current, two kilo ohms is approximately two amps, etc. So I'm limiting mine to 1.5 amps, which is pretty low for NEMA 23 motors, but I was getting a lot of heat and I'm still trying to sort out some motion issues, which you'll see later. As with most of my soldering, I'm trying to hide this as best as I can in this DB9 connector shell. Just as things were starting to go my way, this actually happened. I should note that the Roomba board doesn't have wireless connectivity, so this is a bit of a pickle. Fortunately, in my vast collection of components, I had a different style of USB connector, and there were already through holes in the board that would support it. The real kick in the pants here, though, is that I didn't have the right cable. Yay, spending more money. I also installed my limit switches on these acrylic brackets. As you can imagine, I made extra brackets, because figuring out your limit switches is a great way of breaking things. I also attached the extruder to the extruder head using an aluminum bracket, which you can see here. I also got this extruder off of Amazon for about $10. I'm just going to use a commercial extruder until I can come up with something I'm happy with. I'm using a Bowden style extruder, which is the answer to people saying you can't push rope. You can push rope, as long as it's constrained. In this case, the filament's being constrained by a Teflon tube, which fits into the standard pneumatic quick-fit connector. The tube simply pushes into the connector, and to pull the tube out, you simply depress the flange and pull. Tensioning against the extruder gear, which I've taken out for this, is accomplished using a bell crank and a spring. The logic behind the Z-axis is just to make use of the standard bearing block that's sold with the ball screw. I didn't want to have to figure out the angular contact bearings, and that whole thing was sold for about 12 bucks. I made a simple bracket for connecting the NEMA 23 motor to the frame. You'll notice that there's no locating features on the bracket, nor are there locating features on the X and Y brackets. This permits the motor to self-locate against the shaft, which means it'll probably line up more concentric. I decided to use a jaw style coupling to connect the motor shaft to the ball screw shaft. These are very inexpensive and they're fairly forgiving with misalignment. That button head screw is pretty stripped out and I'm going to have to extract it soon. Jaw style couplings have become quite inexpensive with ball screws becoming quite inexpensive as well. Uh, but a few years ago they weren't so inexpensive, so I got pretty good at making them. I basically just cut them from the top down like this. The jaw profile for this size is simply defined as two 1 inch holes that are 1 inch apart and 7 16 of an inch deep, and then a 5 8 inch hole in the middle. As with all standard components nowadays, 99% of the time it's not going to make sense to make them yourself. You're never going to save time or money making them yourself as opposed to just buying what you need. But sometimes when you need, say, a custom size or you need something right away, it does make sense to know how to make these standard components. With all the axes in place, it was time to think about how to put the table on. I settled on using some braces on more 80-20 style extrusion. I was running out of time for these parts, so I designed them and machined them within an hour, and I think they turned out pretty well. The heated bed is another Amazon purchase. You can see the name right there. Uh, a heated bed is basically just a PCB, and it's got all these traces zigzagging back and forth on it, and the heating actually just comes from electrical inefficiency in the copper. There's also some sensors built in to make sure it doesn't get too hot. The other side is just plain old aluminum, and uh, you can put like a build surface on there. Uh, we used to use Captain Tape, now there's some other options, and that basically helps prints adhere to the surface. This is the braces I showed cutting earlier, and this is how they fit onto the 8020 extrusion. You can see I've got some brackets on the end here, and those are to attach to the Z-axis I showed in the last video. Um, I've got the, the nuts and the fasteners here, and those are going to be a pain in the butt to slide into place. This is what the braces actually look like. You can see I drilled some holes in them to make them faster. And then the braces are attached using two M5 fasteners from the top, which you can see. All in all, I'm reasonably happy with how these turned out. The surface finish could be a little bit better, and I managed to screw up the hole locations, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, but I think I can work around it later. I want to try using this machine for PCB milling, and in order to do that, I have to have a different table anyway, so I might have an interlocking set of tables. The whole table assembly fits on the Z-axis using these right angle brackets. Now, these right angle brackets don't have any bracing on them, so they're not quite rigid enough for what I'm looking for. I think I'm going to get some from Mizumi, which will have bracing on them. 
I'm also going to get some black anodized extrusion because, well, it's got to look nice. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the cabling yet for the Z-axis. I don't think it's long enough to need a drag chain, so I think I'm just going to route them off directly, and hopefully they move in a, in a neat and tidy kind of way. One thing I really want to get better at is cable management. As you can see, I've got quite a ways to go and quite a bit to learn. I should also stop keeping Allen keys that come with IKEA furniture. The final step is just putting the table on and of course eventually screwing it down. Well, there's nothing left to do but taxi to the runway and hit the afterburners. Ugh. Why does it sound like that? Well, as you've probably deduced, there's something wrong with it. I'm not exactly sure what's causing it, but there's a few suspects. Potentially the firmware, I don't really know what I'm doing with that, so I probably missed a setting. It could also be a wiring problem on the room aboard, namely a floating ground, where if it's sending step signals, which are basically high-low signals, if low isn't low enough, or high isn't high enough, it's not going to do the steps. So I have to check the grounding on all those. And it could also just be the software, it might have a safe setting in it somewhere, so it can't go too fast. I think I'm pretty happy with this project so far mechanically, but I think electrically I'm going to have to save up some money and go to Technic and get some clear path motors. Those are going to be a lot faster and a lot quieter, and I think they're going to give me the performance I'm looking for. So there's a few things left to do on this project. I've got to fix this XY business, and I've got to get a better motor for Z because I think it's broken. Uh, I also want to get the extruder and heated bed working soon. And I also think I'm going to add a belt tensioner for belt stretch. Here are some other things going on in the channel. This is, no joke, my old tripod. But thanks to my patrons and a sale on Amazon, I have a new one. Thank you very much, patrons. Hopefully you see an increase in video quality. My tool turrets seem to have been quite popular among my viewers, so I'm looking at making a third model, hopefully direct drive. This is a little test. Coming soon to a channel near you. People seem to like my pulley video, so I think I'm going to do one on bearings next. Stay tuned. I know I keep saying my tool turrets are almost done, but this time they almost are. I've basically just got to figure out a PCB and plug them into Masso, and then I'll do a video on how they work. Finally, the project I'm most excited for is actually building another machine. And you're coming too! We're going to be starting with the spindle. Well, that's it for this update. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you want to see what I'm up to more day-to-day -day basis, please go see my Instagram. And if you want to support the channel, please feel free to go to my Patreon. Cheers!